Hello and welcome to this short preparatory video lecture on cavity flow using open phone. We wish to refine the mesh, mesh grid and up to obtain more accurate results and learn how to change the Reynolds number. But before that, let us learn how the basic cavity tutorial problem is set up. The lid driven cavity flow has three stationary walls and the top wall is sliding over the fluid which is inside. The problem is two dimensional. In an earlier tutorial, we learned how to view the mesh grid and plot the local velocity contours in para view. Let us now see how the problem was set up in the open form configuration files. The solver is defined in the file control dict. We see that the solver application is IcoFoam here. We can Google IcoFoam equation and check the OpenFoam user guide in openfoam.com for the governing equations that are involved. These are the governing equations from openfoam.com. This is the continuity equation and this is the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. Here, U is the velocity and P is the kinematic pressure. What is the kinematic pressure? Consider the generic Navier-Stokes equation in absence of gravitational force. For an incompressible fluid, the density is constant. We can divide the entire equation by the density rho. Absorbing the pressure, absorbing the density under different variables. Here, the pressure term P star divided by density is redefined as a new variable small p. This is called as a kinematic pressure. It has the units of meter square per second square. We can verify this by inspecting the file P under the initial conditions directory, where we see that the object P has a dimension of 0 to minus 2 for MLT, which is meter square per second square. The viscosity again is divided by this row and we get the kinematic viscosity mu. Therefore, this is the equation that is solved in uh, open form, which is derived from the general uh, Navier-Stokes equation. We have kinematic pressure instead of the usual pressure and kinematic viscosity instead of the dynamic viscosity. We know that the Reynolds number is defined as du rho by mu or du by mu, where mu is the kinematic viscosity. To find the Reynolds number, we need the characteristic length. Here, the characteristic length could be either the width or the height of the cavity. Inspecting the block mesh tick file, we see from the vertices that the height and width are one unit each. However, this is also multiplied by a factor 0 0.1 to convert this to meters. Therefore, the height is 0.1 meter. The characteristic velocity is the velocity of the uh, imposed velocity of the wall. And this is defined in the initial condition file capital U under the directory 0. Inspecting this file, we find that the moving wall has a velocity equal to 1 meter per second in the x direction. Therefore, the Reynolds number is 0.1 for the height, 1 for the velocity, and 0 0.01 for the uh, kinematic viscosity. Kinematic viscosity here is obtained from, uh, can be visible in this file transport properties under constant directory, it has a value of 0 0.01. Therefore, the Reynolds number in the default uh, tutorial is 10. Now, let us inspect the default mesh. 
also defined in the block mesh dict file. We use the block mesh utility to generate the mesh from this definition. Block mesh utility divides a, a large uh, hexahedral block into several smaller hexahedrons. In this case, we have 20 hexahedrons in the x direction, 20 hexahedrons in the y direction, and one hexahedron in the z direction. So this is the meaning of 2021. And this defines the block. The block of the uh, hexahedron um, is defined by these vertices, which was defined in the previous uh, slide. The hex function has a second argument, which tells the nature of grading. Here, it is a simple grading. And simple grading, again, takes three parameters, x, y, and z, for the expansion ratios. The expansion ratio is the ratio of the width of the edge of the last element to that of the first element. So this is delta E divided by delta S. So this is expansion ratio in the x direction, y direction, and the z direction. If the expansion ratio is 1, it means that there is no expansion along the x, y, and z direction, and all the cells are of uniform width. With this, we come to the end of the preparatory material. We will use this knowledge to refine the meshes and change the Reynolds number in the tutorial session. Thank you.